This, uh, as I said, I am the education chair for the Singapore chapter of the Internet Society. If any of you are familiar with the Internet Society, it's an international organization that goes into promote the free use of the internet. And in third world countries, what we will focus on is infrastructure building. Because that's how people are going to get onto the internet in the third world country. But here we are in a place where there's Wi Fi coming out for years. Walking through here, if you just do some uh, testing with your Wi Fi, it's only be looking at because there's Wi Fi everywhere, there's internet access everywhere. So infrastructure is not a problem in Singapore. So what can the internet society do with that? In Singapore, our interest is in bringing more awareness to people who are using the internet about the issues that are involved. And one of these issues is the skills gap that exists right now in several fields, one of which is cybersecurity. So I'm very happy to be invited here by Anders. Thank you very much. In my day job, I am a lecturer in the Market Polytechnic. I am a lecturer in the Law Division. Of my Original training was in law, but besides teaching law, I also teach the digital forensic students and I teach them criminal procedure for digital forensics. Because, as we see, the technology is part of the picture, but there is a bigger picture involved in all of it. And as I was telling Linus, in February, I'll be leaving the Market Polytechnic to join the EU. I'll be joining the Center for National Security as a Senior Research Fellow in Cyber Security Law, which is yet another interesting space to be in. And so I'm happy today to share with you what we see, uh, the gaps and what is being done and the opportunities that are for you. Because at the end of the day, I think you want to know what's in it for me. And I understood when I went to Audrey that Almost everyone here is already a technology, the IT expert in your field. So you don't have to go through, the, for my part, the technical part of what is cybersecurity, because you already know. But there are certain opportunities that are available to all of us because of the unique situation that we are in in Singapore. And that has to do with this thing called smart nation. And the smart nation is a smart idea. It comes out of the Prime Minister's office. And it's an initiative to blanket the whole country with sensors and infrastructure that will allow everything in Singapore to be connected up to the internet. This is something that many of you are already aware of. It is basically the Internet of Things on speed. We've already seen proposals like this. Some are already in place. Having wearable technology, the infrastructure to allow wearable technology to pick up everything. And in the future, we might not be carrying around our NRICs. Or our passports will be carrying around the ring, or we might have it embedded in the back of our necks, like we see sometimes in your movies. We also have a whole digital platform that enables this to happen because the various government agencies have been granting a lot more access to a lot of the public data so that it can be crunched and can be aggregated and you can run analytics for it to come up with new services and with new functionality that can help the whole country. And Pongo is one of the places. Is anybody here living in Pongo? Ah, so you get a chance to do some of this. And so there are things like sensors in the form of the elderly as we our nation becomes grayer and grayer that look out to track if anybody has fallen down and can't get up or virtual therapy self-driving cars all of this internet of things which 
is going to be not just driven by the business innovation opportunities that exist from all around the world, but here an actual government initiative with government funds behind this. And we've already seen the smart cars, if any of you saw the smart cars in Europe, what do you look for? Smart cars driving around in Europe. How did it look? <laughs> Very bulky. Very bulky. Was it smooth when you were moving around? Quite more partisans. Too many that are that produced by carbon, too many external sound. So it's still a, a progress. Uh, yeah. It's still a progress. But yet it's already there. <coughs> While other countries are debating should we allow smart cars or should we not allow smart cars, it's there already. We have it in the world. The only risk is that it might drive into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> but it's already there, they are already in motion. And this is not a future that is in the distance, this is our present that is happening now. The funding is already there, the projects are already there in progress. And as we all imagine, that means there are greater risks. Because the more things that you have open, all of us know, the more points there are for attacks, the more potential point of failure. And it has already been shown that with the Samsung fridge, with the smart fridge, a brilliant thing actually we should probably save in many situations where food has been in there too long and spoiled and it's been thrown out. Or that terrible thing in the morning when you suddenly realize that, that you don't have enough breakfast for the kids to go to school. Smart fridge, very useful, connected to the internet, but also a vulnerability in your home. And so it has already been tested, there are vulnerabilities in smart fridges that allow intruders to get penetrate through the fridge into your home network and therefore into all of the computers in your home. Also, researchers have been able to take over smart fridges and use them as a bot net. It's a bizarre idea. Some of you are familiar with this. If you visit DDoS, buy a thousand fridges. Then, literally, you can say that my website is frozen. My fridges. <laughs> So, it's wonderful, it's there, it's serving us, it's, but it's also a vulnerability because these are being rushed out to the market. Security is not the number one priority when this is being launched. Having some K-pop star to go and advertise it is a priority. Having a good booth in a consumer show is a priority, but security is not something that will sell more fridges. Because the man in the street does not imagine, why would hackers want to break into my fridge? The only people who want to break into my fridge are the kids. They want to get the ice cream, you know. So what's the big deal? It's, but it is a big deal if your fridge is taken over and becomes part of a botnet or becomes the back door into your own network or an office network because you could have an office fridge that is a smart fridge and then suddenly we realize that it's a way in. And what about the smart cars? Researchers have already shown that there are several models of regular cars that can be taken over by going in through the radio signal and the radio being connected to the onboard computer hmm. can be used to control the brake and the acceleration. How does it make you feel driving a nice new car that you have or if you're riding in a friend's car and you see that nice dashboard display which shows you so much information realizing that at any point somebody could take over the brakes or acceleration. Now let's multiply that by a few orders of magnitude when we start thinking about 
the whole army of smart cars will be solved. Fanning out from the Chinese garden to Europe, taken over by Malaysian hackers, roaming the streets of Singapore. Could that happen? Sounds far fetched, but if you can get into a regular car which has a driver that could hopefully pull the plug, what more with a smart car? Actually, <laughs> if you are in a car which has been manufactured in the past few years, you know you can't even pull the plug because you no longer have a mission key. Most of the current cars have a start stop button. And we know how reliable start stop buttons are. It's a situation where your car breaks down, you call a mechanic, and the mechanic says, Why don't you try switching it off and switching it on again? Have you tried rebooting your car? Maybe we'll reformat it. So these are all vulnerabilities. And many of us are aware of this already. So maybe it's not new. The government is very aware, and we know that private public cooperation is needed. Because while the government sector has the funds and the resources, it is the private sector that has the exposure, that has the speed, the market, that has the skills. And in many cases, the incentives. So that private public partnership has played out in a few ways. One of the areas is the area of skills. And if you don't believe that skills are important, let's look at some common failures that have happened in cybersecurity in the past few years. And you think, could better skills have helped? Many of these failures are not hardware or software failures. This one is 26.5 million people, persons, personal information was stored on an unencrypted laptop and the laptop was lost. So has any of you known of someone who lost a laptop stolen? Anybody know somebody who's got a laptop stolen before? Yeah? All of us in this room know somebody who's got a laptop stolen before. And you know that's going to happen somehow. But if that laptop was encrypted, it would be so much harder to get to that information. Right now, if your laptop was not encrypted, and I trust many of your laptops are encrypted, if it was lost, touch wood, what would be available? So the encryption is not the hard part. Encryption is available off the shelf now. But if people don't know about it, then that's a risk. Another incident, the UK Revenue and Customs, the tax office, this time they had data on an unencrypted CD. Has any of you ever lost a CD? Or do you know somebody who lost a CD? Or a thumb drive? I know you're laughing because, of course, all the time, thumb drives are lost in venture. <laughs> CDs are lost, thumb drives are lost, but if they are encrypted, then it's not so much of a problem. And again, the encryption of the CD or the thumb drive is no longer a serious technical problem. It's available off the shelf. But if people don't know how to use it, and they, or they don't remember to use it, that's it, 7 million families, private data, Here, yeah, AOL didn't even need to lose it, they gave the data over to researchers for 650,000 subscribers. And why on earth did they think this was a good idea? Because they thought that it could be anonymized. They assumed that if you take off the name, it's automatically anonymized. Some of you are smiling because we know that once you have enough data, and 650,000 subscribers is a lot of data. 
you can actually start to join the dots, right? You can actually find out who these people are. And that is not a technical question, that is a knowledge and skills question. And the last one, the US Office of Personnel Management. I think had to resign recently because there was a major breach of security at the US Office of Personal Management. That's the government. And apparently, one of the problems was who access to the database was granted to third party contractors in another country. So, I don't have the clearance to verify something like that. Was it right? So, that's maybe the supply you've been, but that specific is like a in fact, came from China. The same people did the video spread the tax to the price. That's a PD6 that used to be. They did not speak to 45 to do a security tax. They recalled it's going to be quite a period of time. They found their way to get it to the access because they found that they didn't do one of their security tax. Just like they got into RSA and that's why it's Okay. Then they estimated their way up there, got there. They're also using um, like a lot of those. It's not sophisticated, but some place where people don't hack on each other. Yes. Something in the street control place where they don't verify it. And it's the US government for God's sake, so that makes it stuff right. Yes. Okay. Try to make it better than they are in this regard. That's the worst hack in the US history right there. Hey, fantastic. Thanks for giving the details. And a lot of it was spear fishing. Which that's one factor, but there are an hour packages. I can go get off the dark and the same thing. Exactly. Go so buy it or rent it. You can hire somebody to do it for Yeah. Actually, I saw somebody who offered you're going um, you can eat us for one hour, they'll do it for fifty bucks. Yeah. Three oh, hours they'll do it for yeah. hundred. Yeah. So it's out there and the skills are available on the dark side. Then on the protection side, there are people who are giving away passwords and giving through peer phishing. So we need cyber security professionals to advise, to patch, to build up the pattern, the, the security that we have available. But yet, IDA's statistics are 0.8% of Singapore's ICT workers are IT security specialists. I expect the figure is completely different in this room. If you're not shy about it, who's an IT security specialist? Still, it's not the majority. Okay, it's more number. Maybe you are very secure, you don't want anybody to know. <laughs> Well, if you ask for IT security specialists, I mean, there's a lot of so you can put it in some way like offset, offset. So you have communication security, you have operation security, but it's all in the information you can both set, right? So yes. there's a lot there. And I'm, I'm not an IT security specialist by no means, I'm an advocate for security awareness. So, and that's, that's what I'm going to put it. Okay. Post project management aspect, right? Okay. Well, hi, there also there's a better thing you need there to say about the time work time. You need cyber intelligence specialists. Mm, yes. It's not always the technical for the grid, but you need to work that seal the horizon. I'm here to tell you. You cannot 100% defend that it's impossible. That's not the game. The game is narrowing that gap from identification to response. And it's decided to intel part of it. So we do the next generation of capability. You know, we see five people that are coming out of this one in bed. Yes. So if I see your cyber intel, it's more like a great intelligence. But it's beyond that. Right? You can spook some dark edges as well as cyber intelligence. So you can do you realize that if you are in this room and you understand what he said, you are in the house? 
0.8% of IT professionals in Singapore. Right? By just being able to have this conversation, you are now in that 0.8%. Yes, it is possible that most people feel so safe. People we are in a in a place which is so safe that the police have put up there saying that no crime doesn't mean no crime. Please do not leave your mobile phone on the table at the hawker center. Right? How many other countries in the world need to have this kind of campaign? Where the police have to tell you, no, please, there is such a thing as crime. It's, it's a bizarre situation. Maybe but it's on media, the, it's focusing on positive. That's why people are not aware. Uh, yeah. Yes. But on a high level, as high as the PM's office has recognized that there is a cybersecurity issue. And this, for anyone who's already is a 0.8%, great. Basically, it's a good thing. And for those in the 99.2%, or if you are advising anybody in the coming generation, this is a huge career opportunity. Sorry, this 0.8%, I believe, IDA is based on the CSP, right? Um, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So, actually, uh, yeah. 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 so, actually, a lot, actually, uh, earlier stage, right? Before CSP, all that, there's other white hat uh, actors, kind of diversity of issues, right? Yes, yes. So, this could be, let's say, it could be half of the actual number. But if it were half of the actual number, then we have 1.6%. Even if we were 10 times this number, it would be 8%. So Interpol is already here. Anybody know Interpol? I understand that Interpol came in and there's, there's still quite a number of seats left in the building. <laughs> yeah. So you know, here end for me, what? Oh, what are you going to do in your life? Yeah. Business opportunities, these are the numbers which 2011, the industry was only about 63 billion, uh, billion. and 2017, it looks like it's going to be 120 billion. So, lots of business opportunities. And our weekly is available on the ISOC.SG website. So, if you start thinking, what's in it for me? To build up my skills or to help others build their skills. Definitely, the career opportunity for yourself or for people in their advising, business opportunities for yourself or for people in their advising, training opportunities, more facilities being set up, SD engineering for the cybersecurity. Facility, or did you say? Yeah. Anybody have seen the operations? Have seen it? It's quite basic. Quite basic. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty basic. basic. Yeah. And so that means there's an opportunity there as well. Because if the biggest one is basic. Okay, okay. Uh, before that, right? Before uh, major cybersecurity incidents happen, right? before that, we already highlight this cybersecurity space issue. But no one take care, even I gave just in now. Because there's no one there to hack the government. Then later, then they just are whack. Yeah, then the then Messiah, uh, right? Yeah, and the Messiah. Yeah, also. Yeah, yeah I from uh, that time I was in HP SOE. So I I know the whole incident. Yeah. Basically, they you know advice, that's why they run away. And a lot of time they question me, even I was actually bring me for questioning for ISD. You were the suspect. <laughs> because I was the first patch of cybersecurity from Indep, ah. yes, over that time. Okay. Yeah. So basically, they are security is very lax. Up to now, is uh, recently they have been sending people for CSP training to end yeah. yeah. So, 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 so
So it is a big concern now. Oh, it's a big concern after, after, after the Olympics. Our dear James Gunn and Okia Sami went to do some fantastic to ensure everybody. And he's not even a highly skilled. Uh, he's uh, one of the he's might be someone just enough to take a rap. Yeah. yeah. So, his horses are being thrown at his training is available. For some of you, you may want to have even more. Talk to Linus. I got I have certification today, and I run a few tech tests in the US. It's called get the certification, most of us have a waste of time. In addition to getting base level stuff, it's key for base level stuff, that's simply stuff. Stuff that you really want is go spend time with that time. Not black hat, that time, spend time with those folks, don't forget that. This is as much part that's been science, and you have to have a passion for it to be able to get that level of, of skill capability. And part of that is making sure you can develop the community that you talked about here to ensure that you can do that with that other folks you rely on, and those who could do that. The point on Interpol, you know, the biggest state can do that building, you know what it is? Anybody here know? Who was the first partner they signed on and let them put people inside that building? Kaspersky. Yeah. Oh. Well, that was intelligent. Okay. The anti dollar pay in the United States and Europe don't talk about this. It's first thing for me. All used to be one thing, they don't talk about why. This is a bad guy. He's a very smart guy, nice bad guy. Pretty much. He works for a bad guy. He is the big guy. He is the hacker and he's the one that will bring you. He's a big business model. He's a big business model. Yeah. And yeah. so. But to do these things because you have the basics, but then you got to get in and, and work with the folks who do this. And the fantastic thing I'm telling you, it's like it's really right now. You can tell you know, I certify people here, but I've trained a lot of them here. So there are 400 people I trained here a few years ago when I used to run this program at Microsoft. Um, I'd say out of 400 people that I personally invited with seven plus years of experience, I found six that were good that would go against both level capability. Six out of 400 can take the best impression of me. Six. That's the shortage of that capacity. And so, you got it. This is real. What I'm saying is real. That is the shortage. If you can be the number seven, or join a group you trade. I'll just jump here. There, there's in the deep past, we built a software that's the first generation. You can find a software engineer. Does anybody know where they can just be able to software engineers? Anybody know? What? No, that was way before this. That doesn't mean anything. What? They weren't anybody in here. Where did they go? I could they went to conservatories. Music. <laughs> because it's an infinitely open, structured language. They made conservatories all over the U.S. and trained with these software developers. That's where your first generation of software developers came from. They need to think out of the box about how you look at these skill sets. I'm training a cyber intel specialist right now with a number of two political backgrounds. I'm teaching her 20 years old about how to graph database, enabling yourself without any skills. That's what you got to do. That's what this place has to do. You're under attack right now. We all know what it's going to And thanks to programs like SkillsFuture, there is funding. If you can find a geopolitical person who can do something like that, and they want to make that career switch. There is funding now for them to be trained. Skills future, and I think some of Linus's programs also have skills future money for Mount Mount Sun, not yet. Not yet, but you are, I suppose you will plan to get skills future funding available. For many organizations, the worry is that okay, I want to train somebody, but how am I going to afford it? Among the other million things that I'm paying for, less funding. Skills future is there to build up. Skills for the future. What is, wow, was that a surprise? And it's, a, it's kind of limited at the moment to Singapore citizens, stage 25 and above, but they'll get additional 500 over all the other WDA funding that's available. There's up to 90% funding on some courses, which means that you only get 10% of the cost. So there are subsidized courses approved by WDA, the selected courses 
other MOE institutions, such as the one that I'm currently in and the one that I'm going to be joining. There are courses there in both. <coughs> and courses supported by the public agencies. And then the last one, even in the community centers and as part of the program to reach out to senior citizens. Because grandma is actually the weakest thing in the whole network. The number of things that my mother-in-law is thinking is absolutely frightening. As she's watching all those Korean dramas and things pop up. You have a security breach on your computer. Click here to click it. Of course she will click yes. Okay. Nice. So courses are available and you just go to SkillsFuture, I'm just showing you, not because I'm advertising my current employer, <laughs> but they're there. It's okay. Passive Polytechnic, all of these, this is just only just with the word security in there. Then there's also a $5,000 award and this is called this cost sector for the interested in the financial services sector, which would normally be banking courses, now are cybersecurity management alongside these are data center management and big data. So there are resources being thrown into this to help people get to a baseline. And then for those who want to go to the next level, go to that one, go to the one back. Mine too. Training programs coming up. There's also project funding opportunities. I don't know if anybody from Singapore is there. But this is publicly known as 500 million over the next five years for cyber security projects. Yeah, another project. So, if you are a vendor in Singapore, are you doing anything to get a share of this? Or if you're in Singapore, do you still have any project stated? Into the list. Mm -hmm. Or IDA's own fund. This, this is not a zero, this is a circle that was in the background. <laughs> it's 130 million in the next five years. Do you have a project that could make use of this fund? So these are all the resources that are available. And If you already have all the money you need, you are happy with your career, then I invite you to think of the public service opportunities. Because there's also a push now to educate the rest of the nine, not even, we're not even talking about the 99.2% of IT professionals who are not CSPs. What about the other 6 million people in Singapore who have no idea? what we are talking about here. For whom this entire afternoon is a complete blank. For the people I met over lunch, who asked me, so what are you doing after lunch? So I'm speaking at a seminar on bridging the skill gap in cybersecurity for the smart nation. I know that halfway through my sentence, they I think we went, uh, okay. okay. So what are you doing after that? You know that the rest of the nation doesn't know what it needs to be known. And that's why IDA has programs to go out at the Cybersecurity Expo to educate the public, Cybersecurity Awareness Days. And even for ISOC, we are going, Internet Society of Singapore, we are going out to school to educate students because students are there, they are online all the time, they are exposed to, to threats, they are exposing their health to threats, or they could be the next generation to fill the gaps that are needed. To let them know that we don't have to just think of the careers of doctor, engineer, lawyer, which the conventional parent would have thought of, but there are all of these opportunities for them to develop. There's even a go safe online.sg, which is the National Cyber Security Alliance portal to promote and inculcate safe practices with downloadable resources. So, if you are interested in helping to shape 
the awareness of people in the country, there are many opportunities for you to participate, to share your knowledge already of what you know. And not just in Singapore, but regionally. Because ASEAN has the ASEAN Telecommunications and IT Minister meeting. And so this awareness is important throughout the whole region. If you want to spread the knowledge, not just in Singapore, but in the neighboring countries, opportunities for you to do so. Or if you want a career in the neighboring countries, or something that we can have opportunities for you to do so. And upcoming internet society projects. Of course, I have to advertise my society. <laughs> we are not for profit, we are volunteers, but we enjoy sharing what we know. And we're having more programs on cybersecurity in 2016. So the other speakers are also internet society members. So it's a good society to join in case you want it. You can speak to any of us or you can go to the website I saw and you need to sign up online. And it will keep you updated on events that we are having, seminars and workshops, and also how you can help contribute to the conversation to the various thought pieces that we are developing and commentaries that we're developing op ed pieces to help share knowledge. And you can be part of that as well. So there are many opportunities to use the skills that you have in cybersecurity or to develop them further for yourself and for others around you. It could be business opportunities, career opportunities, training opportunities, funding opportunities, and public service and awareness. The real question it comes down to is they hire local folks to do some of this stuff regionally and domestically. It's also an angel community on part that. If it's an angel community of investors that look at really being secure and flexible and it's also local VCs and the other if a town investors don't need most investors, they're 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 a follow-on investor. So if you need money, you need to go find somebody to find it and then they'll follow on and they'll have a great program. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. So you let it. Yeah. Not for I think people there even want to about it. Well, anyway, the question is all the opportunities are of what do you want to do? It's in your head. There is a gap in service skills and opportunities for you to wish at that. So it's in your head. And with that. I know there will be a break coming up. And thank you for your attention. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we have maybe about two or three minutes. If you have any questions for Benjamin, you want to ask. Otherwise, uh, yeah. I do have a question about the job opportunity of the the and uh, it's uh, kind of that non security related jobs are paying more well than security related positions. So, funny you have that too. I think then they have to choose I, companies that are going to pay less for cyber security and what's clearly are not are not putting emphasis on that right now. So it's probably looking for you, you're not going to look at it. You're but, right, but that's changing. Yeah. What, what's happening is the number of people is now right now, so why would it be like this is happening in security for JP Morgan, and I'm working for cyber security folks. Those are going to flip probably in the next few years. I've a lot of friends that make that video as wages, and it's helped a little bit of And most of the people are making a hand that they have no screen size. It costs so much to find new people, and it's very good to think about the fact that there's people Good. I think if you actually have a 10 year gap, you won't make it up 10 years to come close to the people. And you're going to get some of the best. So that will flip. But it will take about two years to come out for the 
being in position of one myself, making sure that you also are aware of that time. Make sure that the environments are suitable. I guess IT can strengthen the program that we're doing right now by introducing the security element to us. Because like what you say, the network is the foundation layer and that's where the tech will come in via the telephone, wireless and whatever, all the smart switch. I guess yeah, we can uh, discuss more as a uh, over the way. Yeah. Well, yeah. uh, so, 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 if you have any more questions, more questions I think we can, we can talk to the, the speakers uh, while we're having our break. Okay. And the foods are here. Please help us out. Please help us to finish the food so that we don't waste it. And then we come back in about another 25 minutes time at about 4 o'clock. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for.